Our next topic is how IPv4 addresses are allocated. So we're going to look at a couple areas here. The first is the address allocation itself, followed by how the addresses are allocated to various organizations, followed by the allocation within an organization. So let's begin with the address allocation itself. So as far as the addresses go, they were originally divided into two parts. We had the network identifier, the most significant octet of the address, and then the host identifier, and that was whatever the rest of the address was. So with that being said, you look at the class A address space that, as we know it today, that first octet, the first eight bits, would give us a 256 network limit. So that didn't scale, obviously, and so that had to be redefined, and it was redefined into the class spaces that we are more familiar with today, class A, class B, and class C. Each of those classes is going to, by definition, have a different bit length that is allocated to the network portion. We call this classful networking. We follow classful networking rules, and we don't have to use a mask value to determine whether you are a class A or a class B or a class C. We simply look at the first octet. There's actually a rule that we can use. It's the ABC123 rule, and essentially what it tells us is that we can look at the first octet and we can determine whether you're a class A, a class B, or a class C address. So basically, if the first bit in an address is zero, then that would be a class A address space. If it were one zero, then you would be class B, and if it were one one zero, then you would be a class C address. And so that's classful networking rules. We also have class D, which is not called out here in our slide, but class D is used for multicasting. And class E was a space that was reserved for future applications, and we never really used it. Now in 1993, that system of classes was kind of done with. It, it again didn't scale because we were wasting a lot of address space. When we look at a class A address with the first eight bits being network bits, giving us the option to have 256 different networks, we still have 24 host bits. And if we were to do the formula two to the 24th minus two, that's how many addresses we would end up with on the host portion. So to have a network that has a, a host portion with that many addresses would not really be feasible. So we needed to break that down further. And that's what happened in 1993 when that system of classes was replaced with classless interdomain routing or what I refer to as CIDR. And you've heard me say that a few times already in this lesson. Now, what that does is it lets me repartition the address space to create either smaller or larger blocks of addresses. It depends on what I want to do, but what I'm able to then do is break down the address or, or essentially I can start to borrow from the host portion and create more network addresses. And on each of those networks that I create, I can have a smaller set of host addresses, which extends the usability of the address space. So that's the address allocation itself. Okay, originally divided into two parts, redefined to create classes, and then finally in 1993, the classes was replaced with CIDR. Now the allocation to an organization. Originally, all of the address spaces were managed directly by IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. Now, Later, after some time, portions of that address space were allocated to 
other registries. So if you were into the internet in the very beginning, what you would see is that the address space was directly allocated to organizations. Later on, you would see blocks that were allocated to different registries, and those registries could then allocate to service providers and service providers to customers. So we can get the allocation details in RFC 7020, and we could actually go out and look at that RFC. And here is that RFC 7020, the Internet Numbers Registry System. And so if you have some time, I'd recommend just going through this and getting a little bit more familiar with the registry system structure, some of the technical considerations there, how it's evolved over the years, uh, some of the changes that they've made, and security considerations. So that's one thing that we would want to look at. The other thing that we want to look at, early on, IANA handled the allocations of this address space. And so if we look at the initial prefixes, 000, 001, 002, and so on. So basically it's the one address space, the two, the three, the four, the five. These would be class A address spaces. You can see that some of them, like the three and the four and the nine, those were allocated directly to organizations. However, you can see some of them are allocated to a registry. So the one address space is allocated to APNIC. The two address space is allocated to RIPE NCC. You can see that we have the 23 and 24, which is allocated to ARIN, which is what we would find in North America, and so on. Again, the point here is just understanding that initially they were allocated directly by IANA, and after some time, they were allocated to registries who would then perform the assignments.